in about 15 second you can start okay <clears throat> I think my audio is open. Okay. No, uh, you are audible, sir. <coughs> yeah. Yes. Please start. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. So this is a special lecture series that uh, Impri uh, in its banner on that uh, at the backdrop of this uh, um, Center for Work and Welfare is going to organize. And today will be the first lecture of that series. Now you know that uh, almost all the countries in this world uh, that have been affected due to this current pandemic that is going on, and uh, the South Asian countries, including India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, all also have been affected severely. And all of you have uh, gone through the recent reports that in the first quarter of 2020-21, India GDP also reduced or contracted by the 23.9%, that is almost by 24%, which is severely affected. And there are uh, so many predictions and revised predictions are coming that uh, recently IMF also has given its uh, estimation that India's uh, economy or GDP may contract 0.3%, so which is second highest after the Sri Lanka in the South Asian region. So all these countries more or less are affected. Among that, we see some resilience from Bangladesh, rather they are little less affected because of the, some good steps that they have taken to, uh, to counter this COVID impact or adverse impact of the COVID, or we can say, so like this. So even the IMF's recent report says that that uh, where Professor Elias will be happy to know that even India's per capita GDP may come down below the Bangladesh's level marginally. So, which is the first time in its uh, uh, in its uh, life, uh, many, uh, last few decades that we can see. So, uh, I am taking a small, uh, uh, sorry, one, one minute please, hello. My God, all these advertisement problems without this, I have to switch off. Thank you. So what in India's case we see now that government treasury has become very shrink because of the drastic decline in the GST collections, yeah. owing to the drastic decline in the production activities, especially the industrial activities. And along with that, the employment scenario has gone to too low level that uh, India has seen the last four or five decades lowest, uh, highest unemployment level, lowest employment level, you can see the rate. So that is another severe conditions and among all the sectors, the informal sectors are uh, highly affected and that was reflected in the mass scale migration from the metro cities to the rural areas and the villages and so the deaths of some people, that's why a few months back uh, in the beginning of this pandemic when the lockdown started, in one of my writing, I had predicted there that, that, that apprehension is always there whether the life and livelihood saved by the imposition of the lockdown will be less or more than the life and livelihood that will be lost due to the decline in the income of the people. So income, impoverization, inequality, all these had some adverse impact on the society, now, whether it is more or less as compared to the life and livelihood saved. That is a big, big question. And we have reached almost uh, to the fag end of this uh, after six or seven months of this pandemic. And we can see that all these are overweighing the lockdown's positive impact. So that is a big issue here. And other source of livelihood that is tourism, hospitality, everything has been devastated, not only in India, but also in Bangladesh. I find hardly right. any people are visiting Bangladesh also at this uh, moment. And so yeah. another thing in agricultural case, though majority of these activities are allowed after the first or second stage of this lockdown in India, what we have seen because of the transportational issues, there is a huge regional imbalances of the supply 
and both decline in supply and demands are there, but still there is a rise in the prices of the essential items. So what happened that to mitigate such of the, some of these problems and to fill the gap of the government exchequer, government changes its policy across the countries like that of to, uh, to, uh, to supply uh, free foods and other rations to the people to compensate their livelihood loss to certain extent, sometimes a predation or as well as monetary transfer in their account. That is one of the policies. Now source of income, how to maintain from the government side. So increasing the session on the petrol or the excise duty. Similarly, reducing the government expenditure, another policy to save some amount of the money. That is another policy undertaken by the government. But on the other hand, what is happening when government is reducing its expenditure, as such, there is a uh, less expenditure by the people because of their reduced income. And if government also reduce their expenditure cattle policy, so overall effective demand in the country is coming down. Despite that, we find some inflation. So what is this crux? So that is a tax stagflation or any other. So government policy side by side, how it is affecting so many other aspects are there. So I am not going into the details about the trade aspects, international trades. Anyway, so here in the same way, if we look at the Bangladesh scenario also, so they, they also adopted some policies in the month of the February, uh, Bangladesh government rescued many people they brought back from China. Though they first faced their uh, first COVID patient in middle of the March, uh, I, I think. And also some free rationing system they had adopted to reach out to the marginalized section of the people yeah. with free rations and other things. Similarly, many other policies and at the same time, the country had some advantage that uh, that your, your Bangladesh country had that, uh, that, uh, uh, that vacations were supposed to come because of that um, your festival. So festival. what happened that uh, it was merged with the government's lockdown policy. Yeah, yeah. So after the festival was Eid was over, then lockdown was withdrawn and some economic operation started. Only that export import problems still persist. Yeah. But I, I think there is a major uh, uh, advantage there because of your size of the economy and other uh, communication, same language, same problem. Uh, yeah, that is convenient as compared to the India, which is a large country with a diversity of the people, economic structure from poor to the uh, largest. And that's why even if GDP declined, still some large business groups are, they are earning increase. So inequality widened. But in Bangladesh's case, it's a little different. So today's in this first lecture of this South Asian region that we have undertaken, the, on the on the major issues of the state of economic development in South Asia. So we will go by the country wise, Bangladesh, India, Nepal, and Sri Lanka, how these countries are changing their policies to adopt the uh, COVID-19 situations and progress further or rescue from this temporary setback of their economy. So we welcome Professor Ilya Shohsen here. Uh, two days in the two days first lecture. And if I give a brief introduction about uh, him, the Professor Elias Soshen, he is a professor of economics at Rajshai University. And also he is uh, holding the post of director of Center for Economic Studies of the same university. He did his PhD from the UKM Malaysia and now works as a consultant as well as development practice analyst of the government and outside the country. So Dr. Hossein published more than 80 research articles in journals in Bangladesh and outside the country, three books. And he presented in over 50 international and national seminar and conferences in his own country and outside. He is a regular visitor of India. He visited Benaras Hindu University, DU, many other universities in connection with the uh, academic discourses and PhD examiner and other um, policy discussions. He has already guided 13 research scholars for PhD or MPhil degrees and 25 master's dissertations. Besides completing a number of national and international projects, he is the chief editor of the Rajasa University Journal of Social Science and Business Studies. He has his specialization of research mostly in environmental economics, poverty, food security, agriculture, 
development policy, livelihood, empowerment of women, livelihood of the indigenous population. So today's talk, he will deliver on the government policy changes and the rural development in Bangladesh. I welcome to all the members, especially today's the speaker, our in the center of the stage, Professor Elias Hossein. Now, may I invite him to present or deliver his lecture? Mr. Hossein, please. So thank you very much, uh, Professor uh, Utpal Kumar De. Uh, actually, it's a, a great honor for me uh, to uh, uh, be uh, uh, here with this presentation. And I am also very happy to be acquainted with Professor uh, Dr. Uh, Arjun Kumar and others who are, uh, observe, uh, who are uh, uh, looking about this presentation. Uh, actually, as uh, I was given the topic, uh, I will mostly talk on the government policy evolutions in Bangladesh uh, on the field of rural development. And uh, uh, to, uh, to this, uh, in speaking uh, this, I will also take the opportunity to uh, uh, talk about, uh, at the end of my presentation, I will talk about uh, uh, some of the situations of COVID-19 uh, that uh, how we are facing the situation in Bangladesh uh, and what about our situation with our uh, uh, neighbor, uh, neighbor countries uh, like India or other South Asian countries. So thank you, Professor uh, Utpal Kumar Day and Professor uh, Urjun Kumar, who has uh, uh, given me the opportunity to talk uh, here uh, in this webinar. So without any thank further you, sir, delay. Please. Yes, please welcome here. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So uh, can I start my uh, uh, presentation now? Am I audible? Yes, yeah. yes. Yes, Great. thank you. So as I, uh, as, uh, uh, I, as I have told that I was given the topic uh, government policy and rural development in Bangladesh, I had the opportunity to change it. But since Dr. Ujun has given me this topic, so <laughs> I just give it as, uh, as it is. Uh, so uh, in my talk, I will cover the uh, following uh, things uh, uh, because uh, you know Bangladesh is mostly a agrarian and rural based country and rural economy is the lifeline of Bangladesh economy and all the economic activities of Bangladesh are revolved around the rural economy. So uh, Bangladesh uh, has a long history of policies and efforts that wait for uh, rural development. So uh, first of all, I will uh, speak about the pertinence of rural development in Bangladesh economy. Then uh, our rural development efforts are, uh, have uh, got uh, changed shape uh, from pre-independence period, then after, pre, after, after the independence, and uh, currently after the 1990s, our uh, rural development policies again changed. Uh, so and uh, rural development, but however we have a, we could not have a rural development, national rural development policy. Our government only adopted a rural development policy in 2001. So I will uh, focus on some of the features of that rural development policy that was uh, promulgated in 2001. And you know that Bangladesh is a is a uh, is an experimental field of so many NGOs and development. Uh, uh, agencies, you know, uh, thanks to uh, uh, the Foreign Secretary of United States, Henry Kissinger, who have told that Bangladesh was a basket case. So hearing this, a lot of development agencies, they are curiously started uh, development activities in Bangladesh, maybe uh, that uh, went well for Bangladesh, also, although Henry Kissinger uh, told it negatively. Uh, so NGOs are uh, good uh, actors of uh, rural development that uh, I will uh, uh, speak a little bit about the NGOs. Then uh, the success of rural development policies in Bangladesh, was, what successes we have uh, got uh, up to now uh, from rural development initiatives. And uh, I will also focus on the resilience of Bangladesh economy, Bangladesh, especially Bangladesh rural economy, uh, who is uh, stands as the last resort to the people and government of Bangladesh during any 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 shock, external or internal or pandemic or disaster or anything. So uh, uh, so I will 
discuss about uh, uh, the resilience of Bangladesh's rural economy. And last but not the least, uh, as we are facing the uh, precipitation of the corona, uh, COVID-19 coronavirus um, situation. So uh, how we are tackling it and uh, what is the situation up to now? These are the, uh, uh, these are the outline of my presentation. So uh, let us uh, give me an introduction of uh, rural pertinence of rural development in Bangladesh. Uh, because rural development, rural areas in Bangladesh hold a crucial place in the socio-economic system of Bangladesh. So Bangladesh means a rural country. The, the, if you uh, close your uh, eyes and think about Bangladesh, it's actually a rural area, a field of villages, uh, plain land with rivers, and uh, all about a rural environment and the rural socio-economic system. So overall development of Bangladesh economy is closely linked with uh, rural development. See, so if the rural area is developed, Bangladesh economy is developed. If the rural uh, area is reeling economically, so Bangladesh economy is also suffering. And rural areas is the uh, abodes of nearly 65% people of Bangladesh. The other 35% are living in the urban areas and farm and non-farm sectors of the rural area contributes to about 30% uh, of GDP of Bangladesh, and which provides 42% uh, 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 provides employment for 42% labor force. So although agriculture's contribution to the GDP is about 15%, and the non-agricultural activity, it also adds value to 50, uh, of about 50% uh, of the size of the uh, GDP. So altogether, uh, almost one third of the GDP of Bangladesh is uh, uh, generated from rural farm and non-farm sector, and 42% uh, uh, people of the country are involved with uh, rural sector, uh, agriculture and allied and non-agricultural activities. Rural economy of Bangladesh is always recognized as a shock as absorber. So in Bangladesh has a vibrant rural economy who is, uh, it is our capital, it is, it is our uh, last resort. So in any kind of, uh, any kind of uh, economic shocks, we, uh, we, 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 we uh, depend on the rural sector, which give us the uh, last shelter. shelter. Uh, for example, uh, during the, uh, during the uh, economic slowdown in 2008, or, uh, the natural cyclone, uh, uh, Isla, or uh, like that, and uh, pandemic also. Uh, it is it is the rural economy who who keep us survive the whole Bangladesh economy, and rural sector is important in the context of Bangladesh. As you know, that Bangladesh is a small country country with this small land with so many rivers, but have a huge has a huge population of 165 millions, and you know that Bangladesh is the most densely populated country in the world. So rural sector is especially important for Bangladesh, uh, who is provide, uh, provide us with food and nutrition. So this is also, this is why also rural sector is important for Bangladesh. So why do we need rural development? The concern for rural development has been a growing issue for long time in Bangladesh as a strategy of development from bottom or development from below. Uh, this, this is the perception of the uh, policy makers of Bangladesh that if we want to get uh, rural development, uh, it, it should be started from Bangladesh's economic development should be started from below, from the bottom, and it should be started from uh, the rural areas. And government development objective intends to transform villages into self-reliant and self-governing communities. Our government always like to have a self-reliant community. So Bangladesh should become a uh, self-reliant community, self-governed community. This was the dream of the of our father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mazibu Rahman. And this was a, a kind of Gandhian philosophy, you know better, uh, that Gandhi also uh, believed that uh, development means participation of people, man and woman to improving their own livelihoods. So 
uh, we also like this and our uh, policy makers also perceive this message and you know i don't know about india but in case of bangladesh we have a constitutional obligation as well it is written in our uh, constitution that government the state shall adopt effective measures to bring about radical transformation of rural areas through promotion of agricultural revolution provision of rural electrification development of cottages and other industries and improvement on education and thereby improving the standard of living of the people so this is uh, written in black and white in our uh, constitution so we cannot avoid uh, rural development we cannot neglect rural development we ne if we neglect rural development it means we are neglecting we are uh, neglecting our uh, our our uh, sacred constitution so what is uh, what is the meaning of rural development so many people have many meaning many people have many meaning about rural development but in simple terms rural development means a planet change toward improvement of economic and social lifestyle of rural people so it is a much broader process rural development in the in the rural areas there are agriculture so but rural development is something bigger than agricultural development so it includes agricultural development it is a broader process for transforming agriculture it's allied and non farm sectors so all are included in agri uh, rural development the in in the literary in the literature uh, rural development has three goals increase production equitable distribution of resources and empowerment of all people living in the uh, rural area and it is uh, uh, and rural development means a planet change through rural institution building infrastructure development and advancement in technology it's a process that encompass the entire spectrum of technical econo economic political social cultural private and public efforts which are geared towards increasing the well being of the rural people so this is what is rural development that we mean so in the literature so rural development has five key elements so first uh, element of rural development is poverty alleviation and raising the living standards of the people living in the rural areas uh, equitable distribution of income and wealth uh, of the uh, among the among the rural people wider employment opportunities in the rural area by expanding farm and non farm sectors participation of the local people in planning decision making implementation process benefit sharing evaluation of uh, rural development programs even the decision making about allocation of scarce resources remaining in the rural areas and rural development has an important key element of empowerment of or more economic and political power to rural masses especially the women the marginal group the indigenous people the tribal people the disabled people those uh, so uh, rural development uh, means that uh, uh, by by rural development we empower all these groups of people so that they can take control and use and distribution of scarce resources uh, in the rural areas so let us uh, uh, focus me on uh, an evolution of rural development initiatives in bangladesh uh, in bangladesh and the south asian other countries especially india as well has a long common history and we are uh, ruled by the moguls and the british but unfortunately uh, that time there was hardly any institutional approach of rural development uh, some sporadic uh, efforts were there and uh, some philanthropic people uh, who tried to do some uh, development activities in the rural area but these are not institutional uh, for example rabindranath tagore uh, 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 formed an institution of sri niketan in 1921 uh, some people established uh, polli mangal samiti or uh, health cooperative etc but these are not neither institutional nor endorsed by the government these are personal 
a philanthropy initiative by the people. The first uh, initiative from the government in case of Bangladesh started in 1953 from the Pakistan government, you know, in during 1953, Bangladesh was under the Pakistan rule and was known as the East Pakistan. Uh, at that time, the first attempt, government attempt for rural development was started with the U.S. assisted, United States assisted uh, program. It is called Village Agricultural Industrial Development, V8 program, focusing on agriculture, primary education, health, sanitation, cooperatives, land reclamation, and physical infrastructure in the rural area. However, the main two things were, were absent in that initiative, and that two things were in this lack of institution building. So you cannot do anything uh, with rural development if you don't build an institution, and if you don't, and, and it is a, a lack was also found that community organizations were not there. So you, if community organizations like uh, cooperatives, former or informal groups from the grassroots were not there. So United States, the funding agencies, they, uh, they have seen a gloom future of this project and they withdrew their fund in 1961 and the project uh, died in 1961. Then a successful project for uh, successful uh, effort, initiative for rural development and was, uh, was started in early 1960 uh, by Dr. Abdul Akhtar Hamid Khan. He was a uh, researcher in Pakistan Rural Development, uh, Pakistan Academy of Rural Development, PART, P-A-R-D, who is later on become BART, Bangladesh Academy of Rural Development. This is the first institutional approach for rural development in Bangladesh. Uh, and uh, it has had four constituent elements. One is public works program. That program facilitated to building communication and drainage networks using local manpower. So this will be built. So local people will be involved in building communication and drainage networks uh, and through uh, rural works program, Thana training and uh, development center. So Bangladesh has four tires of local government division district, Thana, and village. So uh, Thana is the second lowest uh, um, uh, tire. So uh, there, uh, there will be a training center at Thana level. It is called TTDC. Thana irrigation program. So third component is, that, uh, is Thana irrigation program to facilitate irrigation and encourage community management of palms and tube oils. So there are palms and tube oils of common ownership of government ownership. So in, uh, under this third component, so people were mobilized and trained as to how these machines or tube oils or deep tube oils uh, will be managed. And fourthly, a uh, fourth one is cooperative. It is a two tire cooperative. So one, the one tire of the cooperative is uh, at the Thana level and another is at the village level. The Thana level one is Thana Central Cooperative Association. It is a coordination of Krishak Shamobai Shamiti. It's called uh, uh, Farmers Cooperative. We, we call in Bangla as Krishak Shamobai Shamiti. So this Krishak Shamobai Shamiti and TCCA uh, will coordinate uh, to, uh, promote, uh, to, to, to promote training and other agricultural and non-agricultural supports. So this is this project this uh, initiative that is called Kumilla model, uh, it, it's, it's got a good success. It is, it, it, this is called a Kumilla model. Uh, and it got partial success in terms of increasing production and uh, people receive training. Because uh, in 72, it is found that in 10 years, while in other areas of the country, food production increased by 10%, in Kumilla district, food production increased by 250%. And hundreds of thousands of people, uh, they obtained uh, training on different aspects, especially IGA, agriculture, non-farm activities. 
However, more could be produced from this pro uh, project or initiative, but there were lackings as well because our society is not egalitarian in its structure and new technology, most of the new technologies that were distributed uh, are mostly owing to the large farmers. And there was a, an invention of high yielding variety technology, which needed huge investment, which the poor farmers could not afford uh, because it need a lot of money. And so after 72, after the liberation war, so government uh, found interest that this is a good model. So Kumilla model, this Akhtar Hamid Khan Siddiq, uh, Akhtar Hamid Khan model is called Kumilla model because the district name is Kumilla. So Kumilla government wanted to replicate the model in the whole country. So government formed a, a, an institution called Integrated Rural Development Program, Integrated Rural Development Program to expand the Kumilla, replicate the Kumilla model in other parts of the country. In 1982, this IRDP has been changed and take another name called BRDB, Bangladesh Rural Development Board. IRDP is Integrated Rural Development Program. So it become a board and taking up uh, especially the two components of the four components mentioned earlier. The two components are Thana Irrigation Project, Thana Irrigation Program and Rural Works Program along with some other projects. Its main activities were rural poverty alleviation, production oriented schemes, expansion of, uh, expansion of cooperatives uh, in the whole country and target group oriented projects and taking uh, some new projects uh, for the rural women, rural poor people and agriculture development. And uh, this, uh, this uh, BRDB has also uh, subsidized inputs to farmers cooperatives, extension services provided and agricultural implements and promotion of new seeds. So in 1976, you know, in 1975, the father of, of the nation was assassinated in uh, 15 August uh, 1975. In 1976, the, the, the new government, the uh, Jiao Rahman government started a new project. Uh, it is called Shanirbhar, the self reliance program project in 96. The, the, the main thing is that the shift has been changed from Thana to village level. Uh, in, the, in the earlier model, both Thana and village were both were focused, but this time the focus was shifted from Thana to a uh, village level. And so uh, some organizations were built up. It's called Gram Sobha. Uh, you know, in Indian language as well, it is called village assembly or Gram Sarkar. Uh, these are the uh, these are the organizations made uh, to look over the development activities in the rural area and uh, preparation uh, preparation of the participatory village plan of the development activities. So, how the in in each village, how the development activity will be going. Uh, depending on its own resource. So these preparations or uh, plans are uh, geared up and President Zia Rahman uh, visited uh, almost all the country for this project. And the last component of the Sanirbhar uh, model is a canal digging project. You know, Bangladesh is a low lying country. So in many places there are uh, water is locked. So due to water logging, we cannot cultivate uh, much of the uh, area. So uh, canal digging was taken as a project and um, uh, it, it, it is uh, it is started in uh, near about you know the Jasur district it does it district one is one larger one is called Ulasi Zadunathpur uh, can you hear me? Project, the implementation, at implementation level, level uh, politicization <laughs> was yeah. there, yeah. Yes, I think, please repeat the last one minute. Actually, yeah. the video froze, yes, sorry. Yes, sir. 
I'm saying that the video froze for like 30 seconds. So okay. you can, yes, the last one minute you can repeat. Oh, okay, okay. Uh -huh. So no, now, last one is the component uh -huh. of the Sanirbal model is canal digging project. Canal digging because you know the uh, large area of Bangladesh is water locked. So that is why we have a small land, but uh, a, a, a mass amount of land we cannot cultivate because of water logging. So canal digging was taken uh, as a, as a, as a uh, component of this Shanirbhar model. And uh, 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 many canals were digged, uh, were dug by uh, that time. And the longest one is Ulasi Zadunathpur, which is a four and quarter mile long. Uh, this model and these initiatives were revolved around uh, uh, in the 80s. But in uh, beginning of 90, uh, the approach has changed. We, we got a changed approach of rural development. And uh, the BART, you know, the Bangladesh Academy of uh, Rural Development that is in, in Kumilla. Uh, I hope uh, uh, Professor Utpal uh, they, uh, has gone there and stay a couple of nights there. I, I know it's a good place and I invite you to come there. Uh, there are some historical things also there. You can come. Some Buddhist, Buddhist remnants are there. So BART has changed the approach. The approach now is from sectoral to holistic approach. And it is started with two projects. First one is comprehensive village development program project initiated by BART. And second one is the small farmer development program. So the difference uh, with, the, uh, with the earlier projects, that means Kumilla model and Shanirbar model is that now uh, we are looking at a holistic approach. So earlier uh, we, we, we focused on sectors, specific sectors, especially agriculture. Now we are uh, going beyond agriculture and uh, taking uh, other sectors as well. So uh, under these two projects, or uh, the board organized, the program organized target farmers and landless laborers by providing them with necessary inputs and services for production and institution building. The other activities uh, initiated were vulnerable group development, Thana Resource Development and Employment Project, Rural Social Service Program for providing jobs for the people, Community Development Program. Uh, community Development Program means uh, <coughs> there are resources in the community. So uh, the community plans and take decision how the resources will be used for their uh, own development. So it is Community uh, Development Program self-reliance program for rural women and technologies for our, our, our rural employment. So this change approach of rural policy uh, to this continuation of this change approach. In 1993, uh, Ministry of Rural uh, Local Government Engineering Department and Cooperatives. This is a very significant uh, ministry in Bangladesh. And this ministry is always run by the general secretary of the party, of the party who is in the government. So who is the general secretary of Aumilik? He, he take over this ministry. And in case of other... Voice is cutting. Voice is disturbing. Yes, yes. Um, I think it is freezing some time. Mystery. So now... Yes, now Dr. Hussain. Yes, sorry. Yeah. Sir, uh, sometimes your video is getting freeze. No issue. Sir, you can, I think, uh, again come uh, back from the target point. Uh, I would say very exciting lecture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. From yes, the art, target, earlier, target. earlier lecture? Yes, from target. target. Yes, sir. Target, target. Uh, target. Target, target employment target. Yes. on... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Growth. Okay, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So now what has happened is that now we, we started the perspective plan. We have a perspective plan from 1992, 1995 to 2010. It means 15 years perspective plan. And PRSP, you know, World Bank suggested us, uh, I think, I think, I think, uh, 
the internet is disturbing a little bit. Uh, PRSP uh, from 2001 to 2005, it is suggested by the uh, World Bank and we adopted it for five years. And five year plans, from four five year plans and onward, what we, did, we started, we tried to tune the strategies of the perspective plan and five year plan and PSP, PRSP plan towards attaining the target of the rural development. Um, rural development. The targets are employment oriented growth, greater citizens participation in development activities, greater cooperation between public and private sectors, a specialized program for the disadvantaged groups such as rural women, ethnic uh, minorities, children and elderly people. So these are the targets. So what are the components? So, so, so these are the components we have started initially after 1993. Then the Aomili government, Sheikh Hasina's government in 2001, Promal government the first, Promal uh, adopted the first rural, the national rural development policy. This is the first time in our history we obtained a document for rural development policy. Uh, earlier, the policy, uh, policy were under the government uh, jurisdiction, uh, but actually it came as a project or sometimes without any uh, objective or like that. But this time, the government uh, uh, have uh, promulgated, uh, prom uh, adopted a uh, national rural development policy. Uh, and it has several components. The, the components are integration of all activities in rural development, improving the quality of life of women and poor, economic development of landers and marginal people, expansion of education, health, nutrition, family welfare, creation of, of opportunity for rural people and become self reliant economy, uh, economically, ensuring proper utilization of all existing resources and development of handicapped, tribal, ethnic, and other marginalized people. Now you see, that from the beginning, our scope of rural development was very narrow. So from year to year, uh, as we uh, pass through, uh, as, as, as time progresses, so many things included in the uh, rural development uh, program uh, as per the national, as is it, uh, it is asserted in the national rural development policy in 2001. So what government did, government identified 29 areas of development in the rural area. So there are 29 sectors in the rural area identified by the government and intervention was taken, has been taken on these areas really and it is and all the ministries, all the departments who is ever relevant for each area, they are responsible to intervene. So the areas are participation of people, poverty alleviation, infrastructure development, agro-based activity, uh, rural education, health, nutrition, population control, housing development, land use policy, uh, industrial development, rural industry, all are rural, fin rural financing, women, uh, development of women and disadvantaged group, child and youth development, area specific development, such as some remote area, some short area. We have a lot of chore area, means the de a delta in the river. So these are called chore areas. The employment, uh, uh, income generating activity training, information, law and order, power and energy. So suppose, now I give you an example. Suppose infrastructure. So this infrastructure building is uh, the, the responsibility of infrastructure building has gone to government assigned it with the LGED ministry. And nutrition, for example, nutrition, nutrition is uh, the, the projects uh, involved in the food and nutrition is uh, entrusted with the food ministry. And the, uh, so for example, information dissemination and data stock in the rural area. Every union, what is panchayat in your, in your uh, 
country. Our country is it is Union Polishot. So Union Polishot has a data uh, archive, uh, data repository, data repository. This is the uh, charge of the local government ministry and law and order. It will be monitored by uh, by the uh, home ministry. Power and energy will be entrusted. The programs, all the projects uh, will be entrusted uh, and completed by the power and energy ministry. So you see what is interesting that all the 38, minis uh, the, the 38 ministries of the government of Bangladesh are now involved in rural, uh, rural in, uh, in, 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 in uh, rural development activities. Okay, so uh, this is in interesting that and all the ministries are bound to take project every year. They have to show in the annual development plan that what projects, what development projects they have taken for rural areas. So involvement of, the, of all concerned ministries and uh, it is 38 ministries are involved in these development activities. So uh, in addition to this, there are some special programs which are under the prime minister's department. These are called Asrayan program, housing for the poor people. These are directly under the prime minister department. Back home program, uh, 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 we call it Ghare Phera or uh, back home program. So those people who wrongly went to the uh, town area, urban area and cannot manage their livelihood. So they are taken to the village again. So they are uh, given, given some uh, sort of supports. One house, one farm. As Bangladesh is a country of fertile land, so every house should become a farm. So you, in the sites of your home, you should, uh, you should uh, have some trees, uh, for, uh, trees like uh, horticultural activities or uh, in your house, you rear poultry or uh, livestock like that. So, so for this, government give you credit and some support. Shanti Nibash means peace about deserted wife and destitute women's uh, program for uh, this deserted and destitute women, rural credit program, and subsidy for a small farmers. And we have a huge safety net program. This year, we have allotted near about one lakh crore taka, that means 3.1 percent of the budget of, uh, of, of the budget for uh, safety net program. There are 38 uh, categories of safety nets. That is the old age allowances, allowances for widows, a stipend for education, uh, uh, food for education, vulnerable group development, vulnerable group fund, etc. So there are 80, uh, 38. Uh, categories under which we distribute one lakh crore taka. Uh, these are all uh, economically vulnerable people. So non-government actors. So uh, up to now, all are uh, government initiatives. Now uh, uh, we cannot uh, avoid the non-government act, uh, uh, the role of non-government organizations as the Economist and World Bank and most of the international. Uh, international uh, agencies also recognize that Bangladesh's rural development uh, uh, is uh, partially due to the activities of NGOs in Bangladesh. We have uh, near about uh, 5,000 NGOs, uh, sorry, I, I write 500, not 5,000 NGOs, local and international, and they are working, they have, uh, they, they outreached uh, all the remote areas and work uh, day and night, all they, they, they mostly uh, focus on poverty elevation and through income and employment generation, health and sanitation, agriculture and rural craft, vocational education, relief and rehabilitation, family planning. These are the main uh, focus areas of the uh, NGOs. And uh, many national NGOs were born out uh, during, uh, during the uh, after the liberation uh, war, uh, uh, liberation war and the devastating cyclone in the 1970s. And they continued also, uh, uh, they first uh, devoted to uh, relief and rehabilitation after the liberation war. 
and later on they continued as ngo in development practices a process of the ngo is poverty alleviation through rendering a small scale credit they 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 select very poor people they give a small credit to do uh, and they mainly focus on people to do non farm activities uh, and uh, activate them to do non farm activities with micro credit this is the micro credit model and this first model was invented by gramin bank you know and then later on other ngos are uh, following uh, this model and some of the ngos of bangladesh now working in the internet international arena even the africa or afghanistan or in many countries uh, for example brak gramin bank proshika manubik unnayan kendra and rdrss rd rdrs these are the big ngos they have huge capital huge manpower and they also work in many countries right now brak is working in more than 100 countries in the world so what are the findings of the ngos so uh, the uh, funding level most of the ngos they get international fund and government also provide some fund through pksf uh, polli karma sahayak foundation it is something about villages employment helping uh, foundation uh, like that in english so uh, government also give the ngo some fund uh in exchange of a small uh, uh, very low at very low interest rate so that they can work and most of the ngos they get international fund and these big ngos they don't need any need any fund this these ngos even fund uh, do finance to other ngos as well a small ngos they finance a small ngos as well the working capital of bra gramin bank are huge 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 They, so that they have lot of money uh, to work so what is our observation from the experience of rural development activities in bangladesh so in bangladesh what we see is that after the announcement of bottomless basket bangladesh as bottomless basket by henry kissinger so a lot of uh, a lot of organizations a lot of institutions they came to bangladesh and uh, they wanted to experiment do some experiment and uh, uh, there was a saying that bangladesh was a test case is, is bangladesh can develop so then there will be no other country in the world who is cannot be developed so uh, so a lot of uh, uh, institution organization development rural development activities focus on rural development program and policies shifted over time so what do we see that from the 60s to 70s the the, the rural development activities has been shifted and taken wider wider areas covering wider areas and in 19 after 1993 it takes more areas and in 2021 uh the all the ministries of the government they are involved in the rural development i don't know this uh, uh, is this model work in india or not uh, uh, so it is a holistic approach in it place at present so at present rural development is a holistic approach in our country which involves almost 38 ministries and departments of the government so they are bound to do some rural some projects they are bound to take some development projects for the development of rural areas it is it is must rural development becoming a multi dimensional and multi sectoral so now uh, it is not only holistic it's it is it is becoming multi dimensional and multi sectoral shift of focus so rural uh, bangladesh's rural development has taken a paradigm shift so at the beginning the rural the core at the core of rural development was the peasant farmers who were sitting at the center of the rural economy but now rural development activities are uh, uh, focused on poverty reduction from cooperatives to informal groups now we are less interested in cooperatives but rather than that we are interested in the actors are interested in informal groups for example the ngos they 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 form informal groups on 
to 12 to 15 or 20 women, uh, motivate them, uh, give some training, and then uh, they start giving uh, microcredit to them to get them involved in non-farm activities. More involvement of NGOs and donors, appearance of local government engineering department as the key player. So earlier there was Kumilla model and Shonirwal model, but after 1993, the local government engineering de uh, uh, department or ministry, uh, they, uh, they, uh, it takes the lead role uh, for uh, rural development. Region specific and targeted projects. Uh, now uh, we are taking some region specific and targeted projects as well. Am I audible, sir? Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, so, yes, <clears throat> yes, so yes. Some, uh, we have some poor, if, uh, some poor regions. So special projects are taken for that poor regions. And we have chord lands. We have some tribal regions. And we have some hill track district, three hill track districts. So we have taken uh, special projects for uh, those areas. So what is the out, uh, aftermath? What, what are the outcomes of uh, the rural development uh, pro, uh, programs or policies taken by Bangladesh over the decades? So I have uh, just uh, given some points uh, for your uh, kind understanding that Bangladesh can be told as a moderately success story of rural development. So in, if we tell that what, uh, tell that what about the situation of rural development in Bangladesh, we tell that, uh, we, we must tell that Bangladesh is a moderately success story of rural development. Bangladesh's development paradox shows impressive achievement in various indicators of rural development initiatives at low level of national income. This is a literature that recognized it. Ah, that, so Bangladesh, uh, maybe uh, India's per capita income is more than Bangladesh, but in terms of social achievement, we are uh, far ahead than India in terms of uh, life expectancy, in terms of child mortality, and so many social indicators we are far ahead. That is why, so it is a, it is, it is a paradox. Uh, why it is happening? Uh, so that is called, it is a paradox. And it is a rea the reality is that in terms of social indicators, we are uh, we are ahead of similar countries, and and, and we, we achieve that at a very low level of national income. The holistic approach involves various ministries led to expected outcomes. And presence of NGO did contribute substantially to this achievement. Uh, these NGOs working in Bangladesh, they contribute substantially. This is recognized by mostly in the international agencies. And in Bangladesh is a good example of the geo NGO collaboration. So in Bangladesh, when NGOs are working, so government department cooperate with them. And sometimes, so uh, uh, a part is done by NGO, the another part is done by government. So Bangladesh is a good example of geo NGO collaboration as far as rural development programs are concerned. And prioritizing non farm sector by NGOs helped, uh, helped growing the rural non farm economy. And now you know that uh, rural non farm economy, size of rural non farm economy is greater than size of rural farm economy. So these are the uh, success uh, stories uh, of uh, rural development activities in Bangladesh. Uh, success, uh, so uh, what do you see that? Uh, success areas are, where, where are the success areas? Remarkable transformation has taken place in the rural areas. Recently, non-farm income has overtaken farm income in the rural areas. Rural poverty and hunger reduced as a result. Income and standard of living has improved of the people. And, and nowadays, uh, you hardly find any people uh, going uh, without food in the rural areas. Empowerment and women increased tremendously in Bangladesh in terms of their representation in the local bodies, in controlling resources, in the union parishads, uh, they elected as members and chairmen, the family decision making. Health and sanitation scenario has developed. We have, in Bangladesh, we have 
6,000 community clinics in the country. Uh, these clinics are at the doorstep of the uh, poor people and they can go there and get free treatment of uh, primary diseases, not uh, very hard diseases, but primary diseases. Education enrollment increased nearly 100% with uh, gender parity in school education achieved. Uh, so uh, male and female students are equal, at least in the school and college level. Rural infrastructure developed with more transport, communication, electrification, market and internet facilities. In most of the social indicators, Bangladesh went ahead of the neighboring countries. However, there are limitations as well uh, because the, the, the much stated uh, limitation uh, is the power structure of our country. Uh, it's still uh, like, uh, the, like West Bengal, we have also pro political uh, problem, political rivalry in our country that sometimes hinder the development of rural area and uh, completion and implementation of the uh, development pro uh, projects in, in Bangladesh. Uh, moreover, sometimes uh, some uh, uh, bureaucratic problems are also uh, happened um, because uh, some of the projects are taken in the um, central capital, uh, capital city of Dhaka and at the time of implementation, uh, some mismatches are, are found. Uh, but still the success is not less, but more could be achieved uh, if uh, the, the programs were uh, executed uh, properly. So resilience of the rural economy in Bangladesh, as I told you. Over the years, rural economy of Bangladesh experienced sustained growth and achieved ability of overcoming any shock, internal or external, uh, fall on the national economy. This is the strong side of the economy of Bangladesh. And, and this, uh, this, this, is the, uh, this is the area which uh, make other countries different from Bangladesh. So we have a very sustained rural economy and resilient rural economy. Uh, and this rural economy uh, can, can absorb any type of shock uh, happen from internal and external forces. In many occasions, Bangladesh economy has overcome crisis riding on the rural economy. Whenever any crisis come from the, uh, in the macroeconomic arena, so government uh, try to uh, depend on the rural economy and rural economy support as per the expectation of the government. The rural sector has a tremendous ability to adapt to effects of change in the economy. Uh, that means demand supply. Rural people also achieve that skill and ability to decide what to do in change situation. So suppose a, suppose a flood has occurred, uh, a flood is taken place uh, in this rainy season. So our people are very adept to, to uh, take the, the, the prompt decision what agriculture should start immediately after the, after the flood. So they can change their decision according to uh, demand and supply. If the uh, demand of any commodity is high and, uh, and there is a possibility of getting high price of that commodity, the next season uh, people can easily shift from uh, earlier uh, crop to a new crop. This is, uh, this is uh, what is important in our country and our people are very uh, habituated uh, with this. They can change themselves in any situation, any new situation and natural disaster in the coastal areas, worldwide slowdown, COVID pandemics is the best example about the strength of the rural economy of Bangladesh. So, uh, so this is the uh, resilience of the Bangladesh economy. Now, the, as I have told that I will focus on some uh, uh, issues of uh, COVID uh, that, that uh, with this we can uh, consider, uh, compare the situation uh, between Bangladesh and India and other countries as well. Uh, you know that COVID-19 pandemic has stalled the ongoing growth momentum of Bangladesh economy, which was continuing for last two decades. So Bangladesh had a growth momentum of more than 6% in last two decades. Uh, India as well, India as well, but India got some uh, slowdown in uh, 19, uh, 2008, 19, like that. And, uh, but Bangladesh's growth momentum was very steady. But suddenly in March, in the end of March, 2020, our economy uh, stopped 
due to coronavirus pandemic what has uh, happened in the case of agri economy and first corona patient was found in 18 march 2020 in bangladesh and uh, in uh, in 28 of march 2020 bangladesh government uh, announced a an a smart a smart lockdown uh, in uh, a lockdown policy and and uh, professor day has also told that this has uh, also coincided with uh, the monthly uh, coincided with monthly uh, uh, some, a month uh, a one month vacation uh, is called uh, is called ramadan vacation so after the vacation government has eased uh, the lockdown and um, allowed uh, some partial activities uh, uh, to carry out in Bangladesh, since the end of March, the economy start facing an overcoming economic problems. The most problem is was that the export of garments drastically reduced, workers lost their jobs, expatriate Bangladesh is coming back to home, remittance flow inflow become vulnerable, transport and supply chains chain has broken, uh, urban area become deserted of supply of commodities, informal sector totally collapsed, uh, tourism or shopping malls or restaurant sector and uh, transport, all are stopped. So a lot of people become, uh, become uh, unemployed. And this is the first time in the history, lot of people understood that even after living 50 years in the urban area, the urban area could not give them a permanent shelter. This is a tragedy of life, you know. So after 50 years living in, 50 years living in the, in Dhaka city, they understand, in, they understood in 2020 that Dhaka city is not their shelter. The, this, these people went back to the, uh, in the, in the, in the rural areas, as like in India as well, from metropolis, people are coming back to their own states. So this is a very, Tragic uh, scenario uh, happened in the uh, in April and May in Bangladesh. So rural area faced a huge exodus of urban and migrated people, and it uh, itself it itself was reeling with marketing of produced goods, transport and communication was ceased. So rural supply chain was also disrupted. Some of the commodities like poultry like milk production got installed in the rural area. But fortunately, uh, we, we got a good almond harvest uh, in, in, in May, which, which we harvest in May. The almond rice, the main rice production in Bangladesh, uh, we harvest in May. Burden of, of unemployment erupted in the rural area. So, so like India, like other countries, we also faced and facing severe problem from a uh, corona pandemic and it is no uh, the situation the scenario is no other than india but management is maybe different maybe india's management and bangladesh's management is different so what is the difference government of bangladesh instantly announced 19 incentive packages and support uh, package incentive and support packages totaling one lakh and 5,000 crore taka. This is a huge money uh, because Bangladesh is a small economy, you know. So for Bangladesh, the instantly Sheikh Hasina, our prime minister, uh, announced uh, this huge, this amount of money as incentives and uh, supports for the industries, for the businesses, and uh, for the rural people, uh, for the poor people who cannot find food in this situation and those people who are lower income people who suddenly lost their job. So although much of the incentive funds went to the industry and business sector, a significant amount of allocation for the rural sector uh, went to the rural sector as well. And, uh, and uh, government, uh, uh, government of, the, uh, of the country, they announced a huge amount of money for agriculture uh, for uh, near about 70,000 uh, 70,000 crore taka for health sector, uh, 45,000 crore taka, and uh, for safety net, near about 1 lakh crore taka. And government, uh, government uh, also uh, stock 
20 lakhs tons of food uh, from uh, uh, they, they bought 20 lakhs of food uh, tons of food they procured so that it can be uh, sold at least co uh, co cost uh, nominal cost for the poor people so how 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 the lockdown was uh, was managed in bangladesh actually in bangladesh we did not lock down the, uh, the bangladesh government was very much uh, very much uh, uh, tricky in this sense because the economists were of the opinion that complete lockdown uh, uh, would be uh, very harmful for the economy because to the poor people, the people who earn every day and eat every day, uh, whose bread and butter comes from every day's income, to him dying from corona or dying from um, dying without food make no sense, no difference. So that is why we took a Bangladesh government followed a smart lockdown. So some places uh, we we call we call it holiday. Bangladesh government announced holiday. It extended two weeks, then two weeks, then two weeks, and allowed some of this allowed the uh, the garment factories during the uh, from April. From April, we allowed the garment factories to work, and Bangladesh government uh, given two months salary for all the all the garments workers. It's huge, forty lakh uh, laborers. So government uh, give loan to the. Uh, uh, short, uh, uh, easy, easy loan to the uh, owners of the garment so that they can pay two months salary to the uh, to the garments workers and uh, other supports so are given the yeah. food support. Yeah, I am about to finish. Yeah, okay, thank. I am about to finish. So uh, government uh, given uh, food support to the people of the rural area. Uh, cash supports also given through the handphone, mobile phone. Uh, supports uh, monthly salary for the garment workers, increased support under the safety net programs, 38 category, uh, which I have told already, and a special credit and input support for the farmers and special allocations for the health sector. And government also uh, directed the financial institutions not to force the people to repay their loan installments. If they can repay, repay. Otherwise, extend their repayment time for one year so, so that they cannot uh, face any difficulty to, to repay the loan, especially the NGOs. So that is, this, this is a great respite for the poor people who every month has to pay the installment to the NGOs or to the banks. So Bangladesh, men, uh, Bangladesh government uh, ordered, uh, uh, issue an order that uh, the, the, the loan takers, uh, the loan takers, the uh, loan recipient uh, sh uh, should not be forced to repay their loan. Government took policy of loose lockdown that I have told and treated life and livelihood together. This, this is a common uh, word in our country. Then so you have to consider life and livelihood together. Uh, and so 2020 experienced a good harvest of almond rice, which I have told. So this is how we somehow manage the hard hit effect of coronavirus compared to India. It's slightly, we are a slightly, we are in a slightly better position the, the, than, uh, than uh, the situation of India, but not in a complete good position as uh, Professor uh, Day has told. So implication for the rural economy, this is the last slide I, I, I assure Professor Uthpal Kumar Day, this is the last slide. Uh, the rural development policies gave significant dividend to the national economy in case of Bangladesh. So uh, with this uh, slide, the earlier slides, so what we uh, should, uh, what we should consider, what is the implication of rural development activities? So rural development policies gave significant dividend to the national economy in the case of Bangladesh. Rural assignments in social sectors suggest that national investment and in rural sectors gives more dividend than investment in other sectors. Attaining food and nutrition security of any developing country is contingent upon progress and transformation of the rural economy. If you cannot transform your rural economy, your rural area, development cannot happen. And if you cannot include all the people 
to participate in the development process your your country will not be developed so uh, so this is what we learned from this presentation the covid 19 pandemic also signifies that rural economy can serve as the last resort for the people of the government of any country not only bangladesh it can be it true for bangladesh india for nepal and other countries as well therefore the government of developing countries must escalate their efforts for rural developments so with this uh, words uh, maybe i have taken a long time but with this words i like to thank you uh, thank you everybody if you have any question or a relevant discussion comments uh, uh, i invite you to uh, share uh, i like to hear from you um, so that i can uh, get your opinion as well thank you professor uh, utpal kumar de and uh, dr ojun kumar thank you for uh, giving me so, the chance to speak so th th thank you very much thank uh, a lot and you have given an exhaustive uh, account of the rural development in bangladesh and the policies undertaken time to time uh, but the government ngos level and all others uh, even from uh, british or pre british mughal age uh, times when individuals uh, uh, initiatives were there even in west bengal and other places we have seen the local kings used to take some rural development program excavation of the ponds lakes etc for the irrigation and Uh, drinking water facilities creation all these things and many so after that uh, you came to the uh, pakistan's period the kumilla model in the four tier yeah. system of the development agricultural development and from agriculture how switched over to the uh, farming based to the community level development inclusive development and non farm or uh, farm related other type of development or the informal sector development that uh, switching over of the kumilla model that i i have seen and it is widely rated even replicated in some parts of the india that is yeah, the yeah. thing and then uh, the government level uh, rural development programs uh, that was undertaken in 2001 its pros and cons you have highlighted uh, yeah. and 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 after that uh, wh what happened that uh, from uh, ngos level also the gramin banks and micro credit system how it is uh, it helped in inclusive development including Uh, women sector and others uh, downtrodden people so overall a holistic picture you have presented there and also you have gone further to the current situation of the pandemic how uh, government also fall back on the uh, agriculture as the savior as in india also agriculture and mass level of manrega activities yeah, is yeah. Uh, considered uh, for the savior of this and so Uh, only the difference is that not only for the cash transfer and the material transfer government of india also has taken some long term objective that makes yeah. that they can extend the infrastructure development loan to the farmers so that it will be in the long term how can replicate and also how to mitigate the problem or absorb the people who return from the uh, metro cities uh, though we temporarily we see there is huge uh, disguise and employment situations in india now and the price uh, tackling the prices or regional variations so we did not see much here so anyway this was a uh, widely coverage uh, that you have given now i uh, in uh, uh, before giving my some queries rather i invite other people to give their comments and the and the queries also to raise uh, dr arjun please thank you thank you sir i would congratulate for Uh, i would say very extensive presentation and uh, we really learned a lot and uh, really starting from the 1950s from the comilla model very famous yeah. and the sir uh, went to all, also mentioned that the father of bangladesh strikely at that period of time uh, mentioned the word self reliance also yeah, yeah. Uh, yes your professor sen really mentioned gandhi uh, gram swaraj many yeah. the same feeling and yeah, yeah. Uh, in fact sir has also i would say summarized that uh, agriculture or rural a uh, economy as also gandhi ji and the father of bangladesh uh, sahab is saying that uh, rural economy is the real economy yeah, <laughs> of right, this right. subcontinent and yeah. uh, despite uh, having this tough time this is the only sector which is you know uh, keeping up our positive our other economy are really linked with the world economy and uh, uh, many things sir has also mentioned that uh, 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 swanishwar uh, uh, 
model also in 1970s. Sanirbhar model. Yeah. Sanirbhar, Sanirbhar, Sanirbhar yeah. also say Atmanirbhar. So, yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. Atmanirbhar, yeah. Yes, yes. yeah. And uh, then self reliant. Self reliant? Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. self reliant. Uh, but uh, then uh, uh, there is this also debate that uh, is it self reliant or is it self sufficient? <laughs> Huh. Yes, I no, think we will touch yeah. upon this, uh, yeah. but sir, let me really from the BARD model to target and then uh, uh, 2001 National uh, Rural Development Policy having 29 sectors, but all the, for, there are uh, 38 ministries, but they are coordinating yeah, for yeah, yeah. the sole purpose of this. Yeah. And uh, uh, I have some questions, I think uh, I will come to them uh, later. Uh, yeah. we, we also have some uh, questions from... Uh, yeah. Uh, our researchers. Uh, Dr. Yeah. Vikas Kumar was also here. I think he is from Northwest India, Creed, Chandigarh. He joined. I thought really agriculture some question. I will try to get him back. Uh, but uh, quickly, sir, let me go to uh, Abhishek, you are there. FB, Tanya, please on your video so that I can, yes. Tanya? Yes, Tanya is, uh, sir, our researcher and yeah. also doing master's in very famous Ashoka University uh, here in, in Sonepar. Uh, yes, Tanya, why, why not you go on? And ask? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Professor, for the presentation. Yeah. It was very informative and not a great really? look into the rural economy of Bangladesh. Yeah. Sir, I wanted to know more about, so Bangladesh has a lot of different terrains and it is very prone to flooding as well. So, yeah. what ha so how does the rural... Uh, how is the disaster management committees or the importance has been the, what has been the emergency response uh, when you know the flooding happens and uh, in the in the rural areas yeah. of bangladesh and uh, since all of us are facing the climate change so how yeah. does the disaster management committee plans to address climate change also sir i want to like i would like to know more about the experience of inflation on the mm -hmm. rural economy of uh, uh, Bangladesh and right. uh, how successful has been micro credit microfinance schemes in the rural economy. Yeah, 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 yeah. It'd be yeah. Really good if you could address some of these issues. So, so thank you, thank you for your nice questions. Actually, uh, in the interest of time, uh, uh, yeah. should we collect some more questions? So that oh, okay, 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 okay. Right, okay. I think okay. yes. So, sir, let me go to Tamil Nadu. Yes. Our uh, another researcher, uh, Abhi Ati. Abhi Ati is doing master's in economics from Madras School of Economics. Okay, okay. And joining us from Kanyakumari. Abhi, are you able to join? Yes. But you ma please unmute. Abhi, go on. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Yes, please yeah. go on. Okay, good afternoon, sir. Uh, Thank you for this uh, very made of lecture on uh, rural development. Yeah. And we know that both India and Bangladesh have a high. Yeah, can you tell again? Can you speak again? Yes, because maybe come again. Come again, please. Hello? Yes, please go, go, go on. Yes. Go ahead. Yes, so we know that both uh, India and uh, Bangladesh have uh, a good uh, proportion of population belonging to the uh, rural se sector. And we have seen how uh, Bangladesh have uh, developed the socio-economic condition in a very successful way using, using uh, the power of government cooperation uh, yeah. as well as NGOs. You know that NGOs work hand in hand with the government in Bangladesh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Despite having a very good proportion of NGOs in India, we are not able to, to reap the benefit of Uh, maybe your your uh, your Actually, yes some issue. Maybe why don't you uh, try to write the question? 
yeah, yeah. okay and, and that would be yeah. fine because maybe uh, your uh, your connection is disturbing yes connection okay abhi want to go on go if you can go on again again you try abhi yeah. yes sir can okay, you hear me we can hear you we we, we yeah. received your ngo question yes yeah yes sir okay so uh, what what lessons can india take from bangladesh oh, in, oh, yeah. In, yeah in terms of making ngos more effective in uh, impacting a real socio economic uh, development okay, okay. in ground level yeah and yeah and then uh, a recent survey along with impri we did a recent survey to understand the uh, impact of covid 19 on rural villages in india so yeah. i i i had the experience of surveying some 50 people in rural areas of tamil nadu and from my experience what i found is ngos did did really uh, uh, take a lot of initiative to uh, help the people during the pandemic but when it yeah. comes to education of uh, children in rural areas ngos didn't uh, uh, take any measures yeah didn't take any measures no to ensure the education of the children in rural areas during, during the pandemic uh, are met so what was the condition in bihar how did uh, how sorry not bihar in bangladesh, bangladesh. how yeah. did the education of children in rural areas in bangladesh was met during yeah. the pandemic period okay 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 education i think yes thank you abhi yes yeah uh, please uh, yes stop here yes so next we'll go to bihar because abhi mentioned bihar so abhishek ranjan is uh, our consultant at impri and they really interact a lot with a lot of politician at ground level <laughs> all okay okay or yeah. he is uh, also working with uh, with an mp in 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 northeast yeah so yeah abhishek why don't you go on hello hi sir i i really like your the entire presentation on the south indian cultures especially so, so nice i worked with the members of parliament from northeast of india so that's why we have to work on certain rivers uh, issue together with the northeastern issue so my question yeah. sir is fundamentally on the governance issue like what is the uh, governance structure in 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 bangladesh as compared to the entire indian system which has you know uh, a similarity in terms of economic policy also and this similarity in terms of economic policy thank you yeah yeah thank you so uh, are there any question uh, no professor professor day hello hello yes ha yeah yeah sir yes oh. i sir i have just yes i think sir one round uh, uh, professor hussain can answer and so one just yeah, clar yeah. clarification question please, i wanted please. to ask that so what is the difference between thana and a village oh thana and village <laughs> okay. yes, yes yeah thana and village so uh, 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 back to tania uh, you know tania uh, 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 want to know about the uh, disaster management capability of bangladesh and uh, uh, why microcredit is uh, doing fine in bangladesh rather than in india uh, 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 in disaster management you know bangladesh is when you are exposed to a thing many times you automatically get expert yeah right so uh, what is happening in bangladesh that covid is attacking the uh, high income people only not the low income people because the low income people you know uh, they are always uh, exposed to many kind of uh, viruses uh, because bangladesh is a subtropical country so bangladesh in every one or two year bangladesh face Uh, a lot of uh, uh, disasters uh, especially in the coastal area so people uh, automatically some local uh, resilience has grown among the people so they have some group uh, they have some uh, warning system so uh, warning system and there is system that within uh, within 3 4 hours they can go to there are a lot of shelters 
cyclone shelters. So within two hours, they can reach to the uh, uh, reach to the cyclone centers with their even their livestock as well, and uh, some of their with some of their uh, uh, assets as well. And in the western uh, 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 southern part of uh, Bangladesh, where uh, disasters mostly happens, uh, the primary schools and uh, the school structures are uh, made in such a way that they are not. These are normally schools. But these are also, this can be used as uh, cyclone shelters as well. So nowadays, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the disaster that uh, faced by uh, West Bengal, uh, if the disaster, uh, if the cyclone is crossed Bangladesh, maybe uh, the, the, uh, the devastations uh, could be much lower in Bangladesh because uh, our people and our government and the agencies uh, they are used to do it and it is recognized by many countries that Bangladesh is a role model of uh, facing disaster, uh, dis uh, cyclone disasters, uh, coastal disasters. And uh, back to your microcredit question, actually uh, microcredit uh, during the 80s or 90s, uh, microcredit organizations in Bangladesh, they face many problems. Uh, in Bangladesh, uh, as like what uh, the NGOs are facing in India in many places, because uh, some of the uh, people they uh, they they they, uh, they tell that oh my NGOs are uh, spreading uh, Christianity or like uh, uh, such and such like that, but now people understand that uh, the NGOs are develop uh, development activists. The development are only for developing. Uh, countries uh, developing the condition of the people now they understand and all the people now they help the NGOs maybe in India uh, after a few years when people can understand that you are really come to me to help me uh, I, uh, then people in if this situation come comes then uh, people automatically uh, welcome the NGOs and uh, take, uh, take their suggestions and uh, now as a professor, what I suggest to a no, general people, common people, he would not pay it to me, but uh, if a NGO worker suggests him to do something, he will do because uh, he knows that, that, that NGO worker, uh, we call them, the NGO workers, we call them development workers. So uh, they tell the right thing, uh, they want the uh, uh, betterment, the welfare of these people. So they have confidence on them, they have uh, they have some sort of uh, dependency belief uh, on those people. So maybe India, in India also, in India, uh, 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 after some years, what is important that you people, your government or your society, you have to make sure that in the development process, all peoples need to be involved, rich and poor, Hindu or Muslim, or Dalits or uh, high caste Hindus or the Christians. So every people, the country, every city, every people is the citizen of the country. So in the development efforts, you have to involve every people in the development activity then the country can development, be it uh, with the NGO or with the government projects or any, any other initiatives. People must have to be uh, involved. That means the development process uh, should be participatory nowadays. And uh, back to AB, the geo-NGO collaboration uh, in Bangladesh is very good uh, that I have told and uh, AB has asked, uh, this is not happening in India. Uh, but to my knowledge, in some places of India, it is, uh, it is happening. So it is, uh, it is uh, important uh, to uh, differentiate that Bangladesh is a single state country, single, uh, single government, a central government. We have no province. So what regulation we make, we can uh, immediately make it effective after uh, the, the regulations can reach to the village level uh, at any time, but in India is a federal country. 
So there are some problems with federal and provincial countries. Where there are federal countries, yeah, not only in India, in many places, in, in every federal countries, such, such that the, the, the government in the center is BJP and the uh, government in the province is Trinomul or Congress, maybe some problems are there. And sometimes the provincial governments, uh, they uh, calculate uh, the, the pros and cons of the uh, of the laws passed in the Lok Sabha or the, by the central government. So sometimes uh, even a good thing is passed by the central government, maybe it takes time to reach the uh, remote, uh, people of the remote village. So this is maybe the problem uh, happening in India. And for geo-NGO collaboration, you need to uh, adopt a good theoretical framework, a working framework you need that this is the area this is this you will do this and this is the area government will do this so you have to define and uh, specify then geo and geo collaboration will be effective uh, uh, in bangladesh uh, much earlier uh, earlier also uh, some misunderstanding happened between ngo and government and nowadays uh, in rohingya areas in Caucasus bazar with few NGOs, uh, collaboration is not working properly, but these are exceptions. In most cases in Bangladesh, uh, geo and NGO collaborations are happening uh, in a good way. Um, uh, lessons, uh, what lessons can Lao uh, learn from, uh, um, uh, from Bangladesh's uh, rural development case? Uh, I think uh, uh, both India and Bangladesh can learn from each other. So in India, some uh, good models of rural development are there in some places. That is why some places of India are uh, rich, uh, rich areas and some areas remain poor. So both countries uh, need to uh, learn from each other uh, with friendship, with cooperation, uh, with exchange of, uh, exchange of um, uh, people. So uh, suppose uh, some Impri people uh, can come and uh, work with Bragg and uh, Impri can invite some people from CPD uh, to work uh, with Impri for a couple of days. So this sort of collaboration needed and uh, this sort of collaboration need to be uh, facilitated by the uh, government current, uh, because, uh, because uh, an uh, individual organization don't have mass resources to do this. So government need to uh, engage in much more collaboration, then automatically you will learn because there is a saying that learning by doing is a good thing to learn, good way to learn. This is uh, important. And COVID impact, uh, uh, in COVID impact, our NGOs also helped uh, the, pe uh, the people uh, in terms of uh, giving them some, uh, uh, some money or sometimes food. But in case of education, it is a lengthy process. Sometimes NGOs also lack uh, sufficient resources. So uh, not all NGOs afford to help in education, but most of the NGOs, as per their capability, as per their capacity, they help people uh, during their bad days. And uh, I think uh, uh, Mr. Abhishek uh, uh, asked uh, me about the uh, government structure and uh, maybe uh, the answer is uh, given already uh, uh, because in uh, as a uh, centrally uh, ruled government, one government, uh, we have one government and we have uh, four tiers, the division, district, uh, and then Thana. Thana is a, is a sub-district. It has a police station and all government level offices are there. So district level offices are coordinated the Thana level offices. And at the bottom, at the, at the, at the local place, there are union parishads. So several union parishads comprise a Thana and six, seven, eight, nine Thanas comprise a district. So this is the situation, administrative division in our country. So uh, our uh, administrative delivery system is very, easy if the bureaucrats want to do something good they can do easily because they order they order directly go to the district and from district to thana and thana to union position so very easy but maybe 
in india different states has different structure of the government structure of system you have panchayats uh, you have districts as well uh, so there are uh, there may be some uh, differences but uh, again i am telling that you need a good structure working structure working framework so whatever the when, whatever uh, it is no matter the country is bigger or smaller it is not a problem but the problem is sometimes we cannot coordinate so our uh, some of my bureaucrats friends tell that uh, working with india is sometimes problematic because our bureaucrat can give you a decision instantly but the uh, indian bureaucrat can it give you the decision because we have some border markets you know in the in the no man's land some bazaars or markets uh, sits uh, twice or thrice in a week so some decisions are needed so at the meeting so when bangladeshi bureaucrat give you the decision so indian bureaucrat tell that oh no nah, no we need a permission from the district level or we need permission from the uh, minister so this is the problem so it is so uh, this you have a need to uh, make easy now a days it is uh, the time to uh, get your service from one stop center you have, if you have many stages to take your decision it will time consuming and and you cannot get a quick result uh, so mm, thank you thank you thank you sir you have rightly uh, uh, made a very sir in terms of uh, uh, what uh, professor amartesan says yes. uh, argumentative indians <laughs> i am sure we can yeah. uh, do this with professor so nice yeah no, no if we have professor ruthful day with us yeah. sometimes we visit rajshahi university okay then, okay i i, then, I will invite you, you. See, yeah, then you see real argumentative indian with yeah. professor ruthful day yeah. okay, okay. <laughs> okay. maybe in the, in the in the Uh, middle of the next year uh, yes. we will have an occasion uh, uh, like of a mini conference maybe uh -huh. we can uh, we can invite you because right. professor utpal is always with us uh, in any type of occasion we invite uh -huh. professor utpal maybe may you we will come with uh, professor utpal we will of invite course, you and others yes. as well yes. and uh, two three very pertinent point which uh, professor husain made uh one i really wanted to raise upon that uh, on the administrative structure federal and provincial a uh, government uh, yeah. the scaling up issue really sir uh, is is a huge thing in fact yeah, with yeah, all right. the meetings in niti ayog our planning and all uh, we try to get something which is repetitive which we can replicate yeah. and then again really our country is so huge yeah. and so diverse that the scalability of an and really so many structures so many different issues are also there uh, 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 really and i also visited cox bazar of the area Uh, yeah. i think all the international ngos are there and uh, yeah. that yeah, that that part also have some rift social political international rift yeah, yeah. those things happen uh, i really wanted to touch upon one uh, lockdown uh, everything sir you have already uh, uh, mentioned but also mentioned that the ngo workers are not ngo workers but also development workers yeah, with yeah. a clear cut agenda yeah. uh, sir on housing maybe sometimes else we'll see uh, but uh, sir what do you now see especially all the countries going protectionist or you know again that nationalistic economic fervor coming up uh, the role of multilateral and foreign institution for the uh, infrastructure or financing for uh, all the needs which we have during this very tough time all the region yeah. Yeah. Uh, in terms of employment generation in terms of other support now there will be vaccine pp yeah. so many things uh, so what what uh, sir, do you think in your view a uh, bangladesh is facing in terms of multilateral finance or loan or in, any other things uh, uh, per se and uh, really sir i wanted to uh, show you one thing that uh, we i have also written this book yeah. uh, myself uh, our ceo dr simi mehta and dr vikas kumar yeah, yeah. it came from uh, palgrave macmillan palgrave, usa yeah. yes, yeah. yes and sustainable development goals really sdg reports which has also come so two versions we have tried to incorporate in this i will share it with you sir and uh, really we can update this uh, this came last year uh, yeah. and uh, I, i really presented it in dhaka university oh really uh, uh, last year yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it was very benefiting and we can really now see what is happening in terms of 
uh, the sustainable development aspects in uh, India and Bangladesh uh, in post COVID times. Uh, right. Really, everything is changing. So I think, sir, I will uh, uh, st stop here, Professor Day. Uh, I think you can also, then we can wrap. If you have said anything to ask, Professor Day. Yeah. Uh, as uh, already one and a half hours almost gone, so yeah. only a quick, uh, very few uh, things, very small clarification. I will not go uh, many, many questions are there. Uh, there is unending because rural development, uh, you know, that is the um, backbone of the country, uh, yeah. your country, you can say. So, and, and, and after the pandemic, India also is falling back on the rural development because that yeah, is yeah, the severe yeah. other yeah, yeah. than these other things. Now, one thing that uh, came to my mind, because of whatever reports I see, that, uh, that uh, very less lockdown in, in your country, and, and in, the, in the records it is showing that the, uh, the growth rate of the pandemic is, has receded much faster there. It's leveling yeah, up. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, uh, what I apprehend that it is maybe because of some less uh, testing there. Some asymptomatic cases are also there and many deaths are occurring that is not recorded because of the uh, pandemic or maybe because of the some other thing. Yeah, so yeah. as here also in India, we see the comorbidity deaths are there, which are also counted as the coronavirus death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these uh, mis uh, misunderstandings are always there. So some plus minus will be there, one thing. And when we go by the uh, rural development per se, as in your agriculture, highly dependent on the irrigation and other things, and water resource control. Yeah. And uh, Are you there, Professor Day? Sir, can you come again? Yeah. What is your view because or some other thing? <laughs> so I uh, jokingly, I say. So, uh, because here it is uh, steep hills, it is uncontrolled, the rain water cannot be preserved that it can be mm. used later on, yeah, yeah. or even if it, it could be sold to Bangladesh farmers, it could be possible. But now, yeah. uh, in your country also, you cannot control this rain water, it goes to the, uh, through river to the yeah, ocean. Well, yeah. And uh, in the summer season, when you need, you cannot use it. Whether, yeah, yeah. whether there could be some joint possibility of both the countries, to control this water so that there could be better and sustainable utilization of these resources. Not yeah, only yeah. fighting over some sharing of water of some rivers only, uh, like this the river, Ganga river, all this, yeah, but yeah. Uh, many other cases also, the flash floods, that is through uh, here in uh, Silong's Cherampunji, you can see Meghala. A heavy rain, but they have the drinking water crisis because they yeah. cannot preserve. Rather, this in the downhills, which is immediately the Bangladesh portion, so if there is some preservation facilities, they can bring back also for their cultivation purposes. The distribution could be jointly done. That, that things I, I, I do not uh, see here. And, 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 and other things that the short-term measures on the agriculture that is taken, uh, whether any long-term measures or uh, infrastructure developments that is not highlighted much here. Anyway, they, these are some things, then we will wind up, okay? Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Okay, really, sir. what yes, what Professor Hossein is saying that uh, the it's a, it's it's smart lockdown. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for Bangladesh, yeah. smart yeah. lockdown really. Yeah. But really, sir, all the international uh, media everywhere the coverage is really the the uh, the the demise of textile sector by this virus really, and uh, also on the supply chain and the output and uh, uh, all the very good export industry which Bangladesh has demonstrated. So, uh, 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 Professor Hussain, your uh, video is off. Are you able to hear us? Can you hear? No. Otherwise, you will summarize because uh, he packed, he kept up this uh, internet today heavy. So here again, thunderstorm started. Right, right. Okay. So in the uh, interest of time, why don't, uh, uh, yes, Professor Day, you just propose a vote of thanks to sir. Yes. So, so anyway, uh, so many internet disruptions uh, today we faced and here also I am facing heavy thunder shower. Again, rain started. Anyway, 
but uh, overall i think it was a very good presentation sorry sir i was uh, disconnected i was <laughs> please 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 okay, okay. please go ahead sir, sir you continue you continue no yeah. no you go ahead i thought that you may not come back because of this okay. disconnection so we are oh. thinking to wind up otherwise a few no oh, what what uh, arjun uh, you, has you take a few minutes what uh, uh, arjun has uh, told about multi uh, multilateral uh, cooperation or multinational uh, organizations uh, you know uh, for uh, developing countries like bangladesh and india Uh, yeah, as a student of economics, it is always uh, beneficial to get uh, uh, loan or uh, aid from the multinational organizations. But you need to be selective whether this uh, uh, foreign assistance is a hard loan or soft, soft assistance or hard assistance. This is the problem. So, you know, uh, when Bangladesh started uh, uh, building the Padma Bridge, this multinational Uh, the world bank uh, later on withdrew from uh, from the uh, from building the uh, padma bridge you know uh, so our prime minister uh, we, we we fall in a critical situation because we depend we we plan it to make the uh, padma bridge which is 6 km 6 and 1/2 km long a, a huge bridge uh, based on the uh, on the Uh, on the pleas of uh, giving aid from the world bank but later on world bank uh, they uh, they they withdrawn from uh, the funding so uh, we somehow we managed to uh, finance it from our uh, own budget uh, so this is the problem with the multinational organizations sometimes they uh, this uh, this uh, they consider their own interest and second thing with the multinational organizations is that they give you a common formula which mm. uh, may not fit for all one size does yes. not fit all uh, that is what has happened in 2001 you know uh, the world bank uh, has suggested uh, suggested uh, prsp poverty reduction strategy paper for all the countries of the all the poor countries of the world i think uh, india has not accepted it but bangladesh government has accepted it but uh, later on uh, am i audible yes yes please go on yeah yeah so later on uh, we, we we understood that they, this prsp does not fit us so we again uh, went to uh, five year uh, planning so as as long as uh, as long as international corporate organizations or chinese loan or Uh, finance from india or japan i am telling about bangladesh i need to be selected because there are a lot of uh, conditions uh, asserted with this loan so this is what is uh, happening in bangladesh so you, you need to be selected and you need to calculate your own benefit over the cost and uh, what uh, what is uh, Uh, told by professor uh, utpal de actually uh, in every week i have conversation with professor utpal de and, and this uh, this all these things has several times we discussed the low test of covid this is correct actually in bangladesh people don't care about whether they are especially low income people they don't care about whether they are infected with corona virus or not because they know that corona virus cannot kill kill them so they don't care about testing Uh, corona virus with spending some money it is only <laughs> only the uh, concern of the uh, high income people who mostly stay in, in within air condition uh, environment uh, uh, who always take clean water or this mineral water who always take very clean food the problem is with them not with the common people so uh, in bangladesh you know if transport go in full swing every day 50 people are killed in road accident so who cares that uh, 32 people are killed in corona virus so uh, this is the uh, thing actually uh, professor they rightly pointed that our test is very uh, low even he the people understand that he has uh, caught by corona virus a line of treatment has already grown because people know that some sort of uh, medicines or not two medicines they know they go to the pharmacy uh, shop and buy the uh, buy the medicine and take themselves maybe no problem so i think paracetamol 
Okay. Yeah, paracetamol. <laughs> yeah. So thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. So okay. I, I think we have come to the end of this session. It was a very lively uh, presentation and the discussions and a lot of information we gathered. And even many of these things I did not know. I also uh, benefited a lot uh, from your uh, exposure and the develop. I mean, I mean say, uh, your highlighting presentations here. All these even your uh, medieval pages, uh, the development scenarios and the procedures that is followed in Bangladesh. And it was the first lecture of this series of the South Asia. So uh, we began with this rural development scenario because uh, this is a very uh, pertinent sector uh, that is helping all this economy to reduce the pandemic impact. The other sectors of when cannot run, when industries are closed, when exports are stopped, and even imports are also reduced significantly. Many people who return from this can, from other countries, so remittances are less. And I think as compared to India, Bangladesh's uh, share of the remittances to GDP is much, much more. And still many people did not return from the abroad. And so still they are continuing. And yeah. even many of them are from the agrarian areas. If some of the family members are abroad and some are there in the rural areas. So they are, their remittances are helping their families to develop and uh, developing their own infrastructure of their farmlands and other related things, the remittances. So that part is also there, even though there is no much uh, concrete data on this. And uh, always there will be some plus and minus and another uh, point that uh, that you had mentioned there that <clears throat> this uh, more or less homogeneous and small country and at one stage mostly the decisions are given and in India definitely there is center states conflict and yeah, yeah. even uh, that border huts issue you had mentioned that through border huts uh, rural areas they could get some uh, good price if there is an exchange of the things taken place uh, both the India side and the Bangladesh side so that is also there but even then also some bureaucratic uh, hiccups are there in your yeah, country yeah. also, because by yeah. nature, these underdeveloped or developing countries, India, Bangladesh, they are from the same origin, genetically same origin. and mindset-wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it is. Because, uh, because you remember a few months back uh, that two students from your country who are staying here, so yeah. they applied uh, for their uh, passport and long time they were not getting. So then uh, somehow I managed through high commission, I requested you and some other three people because otherwise uh, they had to go back from here and uh, could not finish their, yeah. uh, uh, their study. So these bureaucratic uh, hiccups and uh, bribing, all these things are always there anyway. Always there, but always, every it, country. It is, yeah. uh, it is relatively less or more because they, there are more stages and more intervening periods and more intervening channels are there in India. So naturally there will be little more. Yeah. But overall, it was a very uh, nice thing. I thank uh, uh, Professor Hussain for uh, taking his time for preparation and presenting for a long, more than one and a half hour period. and. It's, also, it's a pleasure more it's a pleasure for me yeah also also i thank uh, dr orjun to facilitate this platform and to initiate this uh, development perspectives of this uh, south asian region so that we can have an idea of the uh, the south asian countries uh, whether uh, how they are tackling this pandemic situations and what are the government policies undertaken and they are uh, pros and cons, uh, the, the development uh, perspectives, because all the policies cannot have their positive side. Some hiccups are uh, all, all, all also uh, there. As, as uh, I was telling that the government of India also, in order to help the farmers, uh, they change the um, agricultural policy also, and the labor laws also for the small and medium scale industries, and simultaneously announced that minimum uh, support price will be there for the procurement of the agricultural commodities so that farmers can get some benefit. But I, I was criticizing to some extent that more than 80% of the people, they cannot take advantage of the government procurement because they have to sell in the open market. So what is yeah, the yeah, point yeah. of minimum support is there or not? Because quality of the output can the never remain go same. to the it pocket of the businessman. Businessman, because right. agricultural output is not like industrial output that is controlled in the factory. Here it yeah. is but a nature well, dependent. So I think when we we'll discuss it uh, some other time as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so many, 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 many of these, uh, many, many of these policies has pros and cons. But 
overall uh, more than 90% of the things has been covered by you so mm -hmm. thanks to arjun thanks to yeah. other uh, members of impri and people who are participating in this discussions yes and and let, me, yes. I, let I, me also include. yes let me also Please. thank professor hussain for uh, thank you, uh, thank uh, you. Uh, yes mm -hmm. so gratefully yeah, uh, giving such a, a good presentation and uh, uh, covering so many decades and really coming to this thank covid you. times and really highlighting that why should our country depend on the other but rather in the in the in terms of our uh, father of nation we should really say that uh, swanirbhar or swaraj uh, yeah. these are the basic tenets yes so yeah, be it any hard soft we need timely money to support our populace and grow yeah. so uh, thank you so much uh, and uh, and uh, uh, have I, I will send the presentation to you thank and you. dr kurde uh, after yes. having minor corrections because some uh, spelling mistakes are there then we will we will speak to you regarding yes. working paper and other things over the phone okay thank you thank you so much and uh, have thank a you. good evening yes thank you thank you thank you so much